السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy and blessing upon us all Amin Now we are going to discuss about the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala One of the hadiths from Bukhari and Muslim, a very authentic hadith, hadith muttafaqun alayh. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Sab'athum yuzilluhum Allah fi zillil, yawma la zilla illa zilluh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are seven groups of people among his ummah that will receive the shape of Allah on the day of judgment when there's no other shape except the shape of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the seven groups are number one Imamul Adil number one the Prophet is reminding us that the first people that will receive the shape from Allah in the day of judgment is Imam Al-Adil. What is Imam and what is Adil? There's a lot of Imams today. Yes, of course. Imam in the Masjid. Yeah, there's a lot of Imam in the Musalla. Are we Imam? Some people say, no, how can I be Imam? I have no knowledge. I'm not an Alim. Only an Alim can become an Imam. Maybe, maybe. But the word Imam is more than just what we know Imam in the masjid, Imam in Musalla. No. Imam also to every one of us. Like me, example, I also am an Imam to myself, at least. The Prophet has said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'in. Every one of you is a leader, is an Imam. At least to yourself. How can you say, it? oh, no, I'm not imam to myself. That means you don't control yourself? How come we have control to ourselves? We have been very selective when we want to buy things. When we want to buy a phone, just example, if you're given a choice to take an Nokia phone, Samsung, or iPhone, I think we chose iPhone. Why? Because it's a better product. So you know what you like. And so you make a decision you know, by yourself. That's why, because you are responsible to your own self, at least to save yourself from hellfire. As well to protect yourself from doing things that Allah make it haram. At least you save yourself from danger. You save yourself from being influenced by ideas that become very destructive. This is something you cannot say, oh no, I'm not an imam. So I'm not in this hadith. Yes, we are all in this hadith. At least you protect yourself. Make sure you eat what is halal. Make sure you drink what is halal. Make sure that the dress that you cover your body is from the halal income and also not from silk because the Prophet forbid the man to wear any clothing that make out of silk khalis, pure silk. And same time, you must know what you say. Protect yourself from saying something that is not good to yourself. Lying, slandering, gossiping, cheating. This is your own mouth. The tongue, you can control yourself. Who can control what we want to say more than ourselves? Control your eye by not using your eye to look at things that do not benefit you. You waste of time looking at haram thing, haram magazine. Haram program through the internet. What do you benefit from that? You just corrupted your mind through your eye and also your feeling. And you become weaker and weaker. Now, it is something that we can do at least to ourselves. Control your hearing. Don't waste time listening to things, sound that really don't help your iman at all. And things that make you forget Allah. You know what is going to happen to you when you forget Allah. You forget to pray. When you forget to pray, there's no protection with you anymore. 
That means you are open for all the fitan. But by performing prayer, mashallah, even you commit some sins after that, but when you start to perform another salah, that will remind you, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, then you quickly repent to Allah and ask forgiveness. That is the difference between a person who remember Allah through the salah and a person who don't remember Allah. And they are still Muslim. Because a person who remember Allah by performing salah, that salah will help him to become a better person from time to time. When a person don't remember Allah at all, he may commit the sin and he will continue committing the same sin again and again and it becomes bigger and bigger. So I am not saying that a person who remember Allah will not commit sin. Being human, we may commit sins here and there. But at least when you remember Allah, there's something to remind you about the sin. But when you don't remember, who is there to remind you, brothers and sisters? This is something I hope we understand, inshallah, the concept of Imam. There is to yourself. Control your speech, your hearing, your seeing, and also your hand. We use a lot of our hand today, all the finger, going into the tube, going to the computer, and you use your finger to do what? To type, to go into area that is not good for you to go into it. Chit-chatting with people that is not your mahram, what is this? To the extent now you destroy yourself, you destroy your family. There is number one about ourselves. Of course, you are the imam to your family. You cannot say, oh, I'm not the imam, I'm not the leader. Of course, every husband wants to be a leader in the family. That's why they always say to their wife, I'm the boss, and the boss is always right. That's what they say, that's what we say. Our nafs say that, but not what Allah and the Prophet want us to say. Nobody can say that, I'm the boss. And uh, the boss is always right. No, you can be right, you can be wrong, being human. And that's why the Prophet said, Adinu Nasiha, religion is based on good advice. And Nasiha can come from the top to the bottom, and from the bottom to the top. We can give Nasiha to our wife. Our wife also can give Nasiha to us, to remind us of our mistake. Our children also have right to remind us. Maybe they approach me different from one another, but Every single one of us have right. That's how we must understand the word imam. To yourself, if you are not married, yeah, don't allow yourself yeah, to do things that is haram. Don't allow any haram food, drugs, drink. Yeah, go into your mouth because this is your mouth. You can control it. Don't allow smoke to get into the mouth and blow it out from your nose. This is not a just pipe. No, this is the nose. For you to breathe in something that is good and blow it up. And now you are a married man. You have a wife and you are the imam to the wife. That's why when we are praying at home, example, for the farudu prayer, if you miss the jamaah, you never let your woman, your wife to be the imam. And you become ma'mum, you are always an imam. And you cannot say, I'm not an imam. Yes, you are imam. So you must be kind to your wife. You must protect your wife, remind your wife to do what Allah wants her to do. Guide her, feed her with the right food. Now, whatever you do, you are imam and you are abdir, means a person who put something in the right place. Of course, now if you are a father, now you are just a husband without children. Now you are the father, you are the imam to your children. Or maybe you are a businessman and you own a company, and you are going to employ a lot of employees, now you're the boss in the company, and the boss in the company is just like an imam, a leader. Imam means leader. That means you must make sure that your workers who are Muslim, they do not miss their prayer. You must remind them. You give them some salary for their hard work, but in the same time, you have a duty to make sure that they perform the prayer. When they are under your control, when they are outside from your area, of course, it's up to them and they with Allah. But when you have the authority in the working hour, you must remind them to make salah. You are the imam because you know they are Muslim. How can you say, oh, I know you are Muslim, but no salah in the working area. What kind of Muslim are we? When we forbid Muslim to perform prayer, 
Do you think you're going to lose something if they perform prayer in the working area, in the office? The Muslim must make sure that wherever they are, they become Muslim. Everywhere, every time. Not just somewhere. Islam is not just in the masjid, in Makkah, in Medina. No, it's everywhere. The Prophet said, be faithful to Allah wherever you are. Not only in a place where Muslims are majority, at home with the Muslim family, no, wherever you are. In the work area, in the field, when you're doing some spot, in the r and in the flight, wherever you are, you still have to remember Allah and worship Allah. So if you are a boss or CEO of the company or manager, you are managing the people around you and you know they are Muslim, you must remind them about their duty towards Allah. And if they are Muslim, you also have a duty to remind them to cover themselves Islamically. Because if the parents fail to guide them, now they are with you, you have to remind them and guide them. And if they start to change, Allah will give you reward because you are a good imam. You are a good leader to your staff. Insha'Allah, brother and sister, see you again after the short break. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a human being. He experienced both joy and sorrow, for they come to all of us hand in hand. Let us study the Sunnah together and learn from the tearful moments of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Join me, Yahya Ibrahim, only on Peace TV. Yahya Ibrahim, recalling the painful phases which had brought tears in the eyes of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Tearful Moments from the Life of the Prophet, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. and repeat telecast at 1.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. He faces... He listens... My question is about the beard. About Imam Mahdi. What are the people believing? He answers. So number one is the help of Allah. He satisfies in the light of glorious Quran and authentic Hadith. If Allah helps you, believe me, you have to get success. Catch Dr. Zakir. <laughs> To get convincing and valid answers in Dial Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic the rule? husband needs to give divorce. Solution or problem? Joint family system. Heaven or hell? Big fat You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half next on Peace TV. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. We hope you are following this program closely so that we understand the terms that the Prophet also mentioned in this beautiful hadith about Imam Al-Adil. And I believe now we know what is the meaning of Imam leader. We are all leaders. If you are a teacher, you are an Imam to the student yeah, in the school, in your classroom. Everybody can be an Imam. So don't underestimate yourself. Don't think that you're not qualified to be under the shade of Allah. You are qualified. As long as you carry out your duty justly. Adil. Just Islamically, it's not like just according to us. Justice, fairness, meaning you put somebody in the right place. If he is an accountant, then 
you put him or her in something to do with money, account department, they expect. If he's an engineer, then he deal with engineering. If he's a doctor in this and that, so you put them in the right place where they belong to based on the knowledge they have. Then your action will be known as Adil. Adil means to be fair. You must be fair to yourself, brother and sister, because your body has right upon you. You must give the right nutrition to your body. He needs food. The mind needs some food. The body needs food, and the soul also needs its food. So every part of the body has right upon you. You can abuse your body. And that's why Allah said, Wala tulukubi aidi kumila tahaduk. You are not supposed to destroy yourself. Eating drugs, drinking wine, all these are destroying yourself. You are hurting yourself. This is something that we must remember. Yourself have right upon yourself. You must be fair to your body. So you must have a balanced nutrition. Every food that you take, make sure that there is a BMS nutrition. BMS nutrition means body, mind, and soul. Our body, our mind here. Mind means knowledge. The food of the mind is information, knowledge. Make sure you give the right information, the right knowledge to your children, to yourself. Don't just pick up anything from the internet. Internet sometimes, na'uzubillah. Everything is there. All the rubbish is there. Be more selective. Think there's no rubbish at all. 100% pure and true is the Quran. Allahu Akbar. It's better for you to read the Quran than go into all these different, different sites. Food for the mind. And inshallah, the body. We know what our body needs. You have to do some exercise. Allah gives us all the limbs for us to move. But if you're lazy, you just want to see it all the time. Air con. It's not healthy for you, but your body needs that movement. Do it. The Prophet also do some wrestling here and there. And it's very important. Go for archery, swimming, whatever is convenient to you. Whatever you think you can do without costing you any money. Yeah? Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created this world so beautifully. You have mountains, you have hills, you have rivers. Do some exercise. Go for kayaking, mountain climbing, walking. Why can't you do that? Why just stay at home all the time in front of your computer? What do you get? We become weak Muslim. No, we don't want to be weak. We want to be strong. Physically strong, mentally strong. And also our soul. Our soul means whatever we do, we must make that our intention clear. Lillahi ta'ala. If I have knowledge, I'm going to use my knowledge to serve Allah. Not to exploit the ignorant, but I'm going to guide them, help them. Every nikmah Allah gave, I'm going to share this nikmah with other people. I'm not going to keep it to myself and use it for my own gain, but I'm going to bring the benefit to other people. If I am strong, physically strong, I'm going to use my energy to serve Allah, help the poor, help the needy, especially our parents who need our help. Give a helping hand to your mom in the kitchen, go shopping and carry the things. Help your father in doing what he loves to do. Be dutiful to them and Allah will love you, brother and sister. Don't take things for granted. Adili. Be fair to your body. Be fair to your wife. If you have more than one wife, you must be fair to them. Fairness in Islam, please, it's not that, oh, if I give my son, example, if I give him 10 rupees, the other son also must have 10 rupees. Or I send him to this school. I want all my son to be in the same school. I want my number one son to be a doctor, number two son, doctor, number three daughter, doctor. All want to be a doctor. Alhamdulillah, if all of them are inclined to the same field, alhamdulillah, but maybe someone just cannot be a doctor. He hates to be a doctor, but he like to be an engineer. He like to be a social worker. He like to be an accountant, a businessman. So you must put everybody according to what Allah has ordained for them. Don't go against the sunnah of Allah. Don't go against the fitrah. 
because it backfire then the children will suffer because Allah make everybody you know, different but if so happen that all of them can you know, be a doctor alhamdulillah this is just an example be fair to the children you say that you're feeding your children you know this one love pizza this one love Kentucky you cannot say no pizza everybody pizza because this guy this son he allergic with pizza he can't eat if you force him to eat he'll just say it's okay I'm not hungry you're not fair to him so fairness according to Islam is not like fairness according to us then about your friend you must be fair to your friend too you must be fair to your employee too you know, make sure that you know you pay them justly you no know, don't exploit them now, this is an amana brother and sister the same go to if you have a leader leader that you have appointed him to be your leader in the country you have prime ministers you have ministers you have appointed them alhamdulillah so what should you do you should support them help them if you know there's something wrong with them remind them that's our duty they are called adil that means you are fair to them you're not here to just blame them of this and that because they are just a human like you if you become a leader you may be worse than them sometimes brother and sister you need help all the leaders today need help from us they may not have the time to come down to see us but we do something whatever we can you can write a letter to them you can send an SMS to them you can send an email to them through their Facebook if you can't do all these things because who are we? we are small fish these are big people, big men they only become small when the election time they come down to you after that they have no time for you because they have big responsibility but what can you do brother and sister to be fair to them to be fair to yourself and to the leader to the Imam you must pray for them at least raise up your hand if you cannot help them you cannot pull them out from something that is wrong when they are falling into something that is bad you cannot pull them out you have to raise up your hand up to the sky and ask Almighty Allah Oh Allah guide them Oh Allah protect them at least be fair to them how can you just curse a person because of a mistake or something they have done that is wrong now how do you feel brother and sister if you do something wrong and people start to curse you of course you feel bad it's not right why do they curse me why don't they remind me why don't they come and help me that's what we are hopeful so it's important for us to understand this concept understand the real meaning of number one imam 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 leader number two understand the term adil and when we have this understanding and we act upon the true understanding about imam al adil and we die while doing all the good things that allah wants us to do we are fair we are just to ourselves to our family to our friend to our employee to our leader alhamdulillah we die inshallah brother and sister we will receive the help from allah rabbul alamin and that's all the thing that we hope for on the day of judgment because nobody can help us on the day of judgment other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course our prophet sallallahu will be summoned by allah on the day of judgment to be a witness upon all of us because we have been doing a lot of good things but the prophet will be summoned by allah to be a witness upon all of us to check whether whatever we do our act of ibadah is following the sunnah of muhammad sallallahu or we do not follow the sunnah if you do not follow the sunnah even the zikir is even the amal saleh or even all the good things that we are doing the sadaqah the psalm and the salah then the prophet sallallahu will remind us what he have said earlier man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa raddun the prophet is not talking about the muslim who are not active yeah, in doing amal but he is addressing those people who are active in doing a lot of deeds but it so happened the deeds that they engage in are not following the sunnah of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
especially in the area of ibadah mahda, about aqidah, about ibadah mahda, the salat, far al sunnah, the saum, fasting, far al sunnah, the umrah, zakat, hajj, sadaqah, everything to do ibadah mahda. We have been doing something good. We went for umrah, we went for hajj, but we didn't have hajj mabrur, umrah mabrur. It's or mardut, mardut, mardut means will be rejected because we do not follow the order of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We do not follow his sunnah. We thought that we know better. We don't need to follow him. So, brother and sister, let us be humble and come back to our guidance, the Quran and the sunnah, so that we qualify ourselves, insha Allah, to be under the shade of Allah. In the day of judgment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.